we're, we're going to look at James chapter 2 and Romans chapter 4. Now this has been the most debated topic or one of the most debated passages in the Bible. And they are Romans chapter 4 and James chapter 2. And perhaps you've seen this in your churches before. So they've heavily debated this topic and there are so many different interpretations for them. When the Bible showed you a very easy and a very simple method to divide these two passages. But the problem with people is that they don't rightly divide. They do not rightly divide. But the Bible made it simple for you. All right, we're going to look at Romans chapter 4. <clears throat> and then we're going to read verses 2 through 4. Romans chapter 4. And then we're going to read verses 2 through 4. And then we're going to compare that with the book of James and then see how these two stand against each other. We're going to look at the book of James chapter 2. James chapter 2. And then James 2, what we're going to read is we're going to read verses 17 all the way through 24. 17 through 24. But I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to read the more salient passages right here. <clears throat> the Bible says... In Romans, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So notice right here, Abraham is not justified by works. Verse 3, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham received God's righteousness, not by works. Verse 4, now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So these passages are utmost proof where works do not count. You'll notice that. So I would recommend using this verse against different cults out there who try to proclaim that works are supposed to go along with your faith. But the Bible says right here, no, it's faith alone. But James, notice how he gives a contradictory language. Verse 17 of James chapter 2. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being what? Alone. So notice right here that faith alone, which we believe right here, is condemned. It's dead. Let's keep reading right here. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Notice verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Look at verse 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by, notice right here, faith only. So right here you'll notice that it's faith and works. It cannot be just faith alone. Okay, we got an issue here. So issue number one, we see the contradiction that it's not faith alone, it's faith and works. So these two disagree with each other. They seem to disagree with each other concerning Abraham as well. Notice right here that Abraham, that it was faith alone, but over here for Abraham, it was faith and works. Okay, now we got a problem right here. So how do we solve this contradiction? So dispensationalism, what that means is that we rightly divide verses to the right group of people and right time period. Because if you don't believe in rightly dividing verses, you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. Okay, let's see how we rightly divide this. So first of all, <clears throat> you will notice in, let's go to Romans chapter 4. Notice right here verse 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? So there's a scriptural passage to show how Abraham was saved by faith, not by works. Abraham believed God, <clears throat> and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, notice right here when Abraham believed, he, that's when he was imputed righteousness. Look at Genesis. We're going to look at the book of Genesis chapter 15, please. Turn to Genesis chapter 15. Notice that Abraham, what he received was accounted righteous, right? He received imputed righteousness. Another thing concerning Abraham 
is that you'll notice when he believed in it. It was the time when he believed in the stars, where God showed to Abraham, here are all the stars, so your seed will be that numerous Abraham. And he believed in it, and that was when he was imputed righteousness. So we see when here. Let's look at Genesis chapter 15, and then we will read verse 5. Verse 5, the Bible says right here, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, look at this, and he counted to him for righteousness. Notice, absolutely no works involved. It was just faith. It was just believing. That's how he got saved right here. Now look at James chapter 2. James 2. Look at this. James chapter 2. Did people read this part? When was Abraham justified by works? Look at James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when, so see it's going to tell you a time period, he had believed in the stars of his seed? Is, nope. When? He had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Ah, oh, look at that. So then when was this? It was, he was justified by works. So notice right here, justified. He received this justification when he offered Isaac, his son, as a sacrifice. So this was when. Look at that. So is there a contradiction? No, because Abraham, there were no works involved when he believed in the stars. So that was when he was imputed righteousness. Then many chapters later, many years later, what happened? His faith received the justification with works. That's why it makes sense James was saying that Abraham's faith was later justified, it was later perfected by works. Is that true? Yeah, because if you look at verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was what? Faith made perfect. So Abraham had his faith, but it was perfected later on by works. So that solves the contradiction right there. Another thing is, notice how James read this. Verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Look at that. James knew about this. He knew that Abraham, when he believed in the stars, he received his imputed righteousness. And that had no works. It was faith. That's why it's interesting James brought this up where Later on, when he offered Isaac, he had to have works. He was justified by works. So there's your simple answer to solve this contradiction. So now we see that this supposed contradiction, that it has been solved right here. This has been solved. Now let's go back to over here, this contradiction, right? So Romans 4 says faith. James chapter 2 says faith and works. So how do we handle this issue right here? Well, Romans 4 is pretty obvious. Who was writing Romans? It was Paul, right? Paul was writing to the church right here. Saved Christians. But look at James. James, who is he writing to? Look at James chapter 1, verse 1. Look at James. So this is James here. And then he's going to be writing to Jews. This is to Jews when in the tribulation. See that? Oh, now it starts to make sense why Paul was arguing no works involved but faith. And remember, he got a lot of opposition by Jews, right, for this teaching. And that's why it makes sense that James, who was ministering to Jews, he has a different kind of message. See, it makes so much sense. Now, look at James chapter 1 and verse 1. It says right here, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to who? The twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Notice twelve tribes of Israel. Look at James chapter 5, verse 3. James chapter 5, verse 3. Notice this is the timeline of the tribulation. That's why it makes so much sense if we're going to draw all this out right here. 
we believe in dispensational salvations. Amen. So that's the easy solution to passages where it seems to show faith and works and other passages where it shows faith not by works. What's the, what's the solution for that? Those verses that talk about faith without works is referring to Christians in the church age. Faith and works, where it seems to refer to Jews, that's why it makes sense that in the Old Testament they had to have the law, and they took penalty of breaking the law seriously. There were a lot of works involved with their faith. In the tribulation, it makes so much sense why you have faith and works, because the reason why is because you have to resist the mark of the beast, the Antichrist persecution. And that's a lot of work involved right there. That makes a lot of sense. And then the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ, it also has a different salvation as well. So we see right here that it makes sense because the context is Jews. Remember, in the Old Testament, who's the focus here? Is it Christians or Jews? It's Jews. Today, it's not the Jews. They've been cast off, right? God said, I'm going to go now to the Gentiles right here. And there's the Christian church. The tribulation, now, a lot of you who are into conspiracy theories and end times and prophecy, what's the nation you all focus at concerning end times and tribulation? Jews, right? Israel, see that? So because of that, it makes sense why in the tribulation, if they're going to focus on Jews, it's going to be what? Similar right here. See? So faith and works involved. Okay. So let's notice right here in James chapter 5 verse 3, your gold and silver is cankered and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for when? The last day. So see, this fits perfectly. Jews in the tribulation. So thus we see this contradiction solved. Abraham, he received his salvation by faith when he believed in the stars. But then that faith had to be perfected later on by works when he offered up his son Isaac. That explains Abraham's salvation. Wait a minute, then go back to Romans again. Go back to Romans. Go back to Romans chapter 4. Go back to Romans chapter 4. Wait, then doesn't this prove that Abraham's salvation is different from Christians then? Amen. Yeah, because notice right here that he had to get the imputation of righteousness by faith, and then years later he had to have his works perfect his faith. See that? So his salvation is very different here. Whereas for us, what we got is that we received the salvation, imputed righteousness and justification without works at the same time at the spot. Abraham's salvation, he had to get perfected later on, his faith. So look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Now look at this, what the Bible says right here concerning about imputation and justification for us. Verse 24, 24. But for us also, to whom it shall be what? Imputed. So we got this imputed by what? If we believe on him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. See, if we believe on Jesus Christ, no works. Verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our what? Justification. Well, isn't that very different then from Abraham? Yeah, this makes so much sense. So thus, there is no doubt that there is a different salvation. If you look at the Bible, it's pretty obvious there's a different salvation from Old Testament to Christians and tribulation to Christians.